To the untrained eye, there appears to be countless sloughs, marshes, and small ponds scattered across the prairie landscape. But this appearance is very deceiving. Wetlands in this part of Canada have been reduced by as much as 70 to 90 percent in just the past 40 years. Mostly they've been drained and plowed under to grow crops. But this practice is also contributing to serious ecological and social impacts throughout watersheds. Wetlands are invaluable to the maintenance of healthy water supplies upon which all life on earth depends. So what needs to be done to ensure that they are adequately protected and restored? We were an area that was probably under equipped for the kinds of uh, water that came to us. There was people that were stranded in their homes, they couldn't get out. We don't have a creek here even, so the thought that we would be flooded out in town was almost unimaginable. The biggest challenges that we have are things that are beyond our control, and, and uh, certainly one of those is the events of the last four years. Um, and the causes of those, I guess, are open to debate. Um, climate change is being talked about as one. I do believe the aggressive drainage policies that have been allowed to happen in other areas. Manitoba in particular was facing significant flooding concerns on the, the Assiniboine. It was brought to a point with the 2011 flood, uh, reinforced by the 2014 flood, which was a rainfall event. I think part and parcel of the problem has been the fact that we want to, we being the agricultural component, want to move volumes of water off our land in a big hurry in the springtime. But we're not pointing fingers at any one area or one jurisdiction. People for the most part don't see the bigger picture. They're worried about their own farmland, but they don't, they don't stop to consider the impact of multiple people operating on that premise. So you get multiple people worried about just their farmland and, and by the time you get to downstream you've got a big impact. We've lost uh, a substantial amount of wetlands in this province but even throughout the world and uh, without really understanding you know exactly what they're doing for our water supplies. Landowners are kind of long-term minded people and they're looking down the road so any improvement that they can make to their farm base this year will pay off in, in subsequent years. So there's a strong motivation and strong market indications or forces that are telling them to act in a certain way. But I've got some areas that uh, my father drained many, many years ago that uh, right now there's a 55 bushel canola crop uh, per acre sitting on that land. And right next door to it is a is a uh, pothole or a wetland that we've chosen to leave there, and it just doesn't generate any income. So it's it's economics. The uh, the value of farmland has escalated, and uh, when you buy a quarter section, uh, there's 160 potential acres there. Uh, the the drive is is very real to produce uh, as much as you can off those 160 acres. The revenue that's left on it, on an acre at the end of the year is getting smaller and smaller. So that, that's what makes a farmer need more acres. Much like the rest of agriculture, we've seen technology advance in leaps and bounds with regards to drainage. Uh, there was a time when you uh, went out and eyeballed the situation as best you could and you went out with a one and a half yard scraper and you very patiently dug a, dug a ditch and eventually some of the water moved off the land. Now we've got everything from uh, LiDAR to laser technology to uh, computer simulations to uh, essentially automated uh, ditch diggers that uh, do that job for us. We've got various machinery companies that sell software packages to their customers along with the tractor and the, and the scraper to, to do the job. It's so much easier now to, to do that type of work and do it much more effectively that that's uh, in large part why it has, has, has progressed. 
as with most uh, things, uh, progress is not always uh, in everybody's best interest. Take a look at what the floods of 2011 and 2014 cost society and what they continue to cost society. As you drive down the roads in southwestern Manitoba and look at the number of bridges that have been replaced, for example, look at the number of sections of highway that have had, had to been replaced, the number of culverts and so on. About $20 million, we think, probably would be the cost for, for this two-border area. We're seeing more and more of our tax expenditures going to infrastructure repairs and things. Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba have recognized the need to toughen drainage regulations and to enhance protection for existing wetlands. But until these regulations are in place and properly enforced, the pressure to drain wetlands will continue. Increasing the fines may deter some people, but I think some of the farms are large enough now that they would see that as a cost of doing business. The really good thing about the regulatory structure that is being put in place in both Manitoba and Saskatchewan is that there is a component there of no net loss, uh, indicating that we will do our best to uh, facilitate drainage when it makes sense, but we'll also require producers to uh, make sure that they've got uh, a one-for-one -one trade off in terms of, um, of creating wetlands at the same time. But the policy that many conservation groups would like to see instead is no net loss of wetland benefits, which wouldn't necessarily be a one-to-one -one ratio. I think we need both incentives and fines. So you've got some incentive to pick up the people that are willing to do the right thing, but, but the fines are there to try to catch some of the people that, that don't see the benefit of trying to be good stewards of the land. There are many farmers out there that would be happy to hold water if they were adequately reimbursed. And I think that people that live in urban areas have got to realize that they share this problem with us and they're not insulated from it. So. If they expect farmers to take arable farmland and have it hold water, there has to be some kind of process that pays them for that. Keeping the wetlands benefits society, and uh, you know, why should a farmer carry all that on his financial back? If there's a need to compensate uh, the agricultural community for helping to protect water supplies, then that's, that's fair. We've got to find a way to store that water on the landscape and slow down the, the release. Um, that leads to the, you know, the issue of uh, both wetlands preservation and wetlands reconstruction. Providing some monetary return to producers for initiating those, those projects on their land is, a, uh, is one more piece of the puzzle, one of the tools that will help us move forward. So what are some of the ecological services provided by wetlands that could be the basis for some form of incentive or payment? The wetlands kind of act as the kidneys of the water system. Slowing the water down on the landscape and allowing it to re-assimilate back into the vegetation uh, is, is a really simple and straightforward way of cleaning our water. We're losing a lot of natural ability to clean and uh, filter the water that runs off of landscapes. So we're losing that ability to retain nutrients, retain sediments, and to help maintain and sustain our water quality. The end results of the whole uh, drainage system at Lake Winnipeg and the algae blooms there, and uh, I get in trouble and I, I keep saying it's a good thing that we have these algae blooms in Lake Winnipeg or otherwise we wouldn't do sweet nothing about it. There are algal blooms in many, many lakes, and so it's not simply a Lake Winnipeg problem. Talking to the urban uh, dweller about uh, the economic return to the producer for, for draining a, a piece of wetland doesn't carry much weight, but talking to them about the impact of improper water management on their beachfront uh, carries considerable weight. While removing nutrients that promote algal blooms is an important service provided by wetlands, there is another vital function that often goes unnoticed. Wetlands are critical to maintain groundwater pools called aquifers. By holding water in one place for prolonged periods of time and allowing it to soak in. A great many people on the prairies depend upon aquifers for their drinking water. 
the vast majority of the jurisdictions within the basin utilize groundwater as their source of potable drinking water and uh, to date very little activity has taken place on that front. You don't see what's happening under the ground and uh, so someday it's going to turn on the tap and there won't be any water there because we have not recharged the aquifer and I guess when, uh, when there's no water in the tap then we'll realize what the value of water is. Although the wetlands are swollen right now, there will be times in my future where we're in a drought situation and you'll rely on those wetlands for advantageous stock watering situations or just the diversity of, of plant life that those wetlands allow to occur. Wetlands, without a doubt, are key elements in uh, providing habitat biodiversity we fail to understand just how important they are. Things are becoming more variable, more insecure, and, and that's because we're losing our environment. All those parts of the environment that lead to stability and sustainability. And so that's, that's our choice. If it's a choice, what then needs to be done to protect and restore wetlands across the prairies? Certainly, more funding to adequately monitor and enforce regulations and to support payment for ecological service programs would be extremely helpful. But fundamentally, a shift in thinking is needed. Wetlands should not be thought of as wastelands, nor can water and drainage be managed solely on a local basis. A broader, more holistic approach is needed, an approach that is called integrated water resources management. It is thinking like a watershed. Well, again, there aren't any easy answers to a very complicated issue, but uh, what needs to happen is to begin the dialogue. Far better to engage people in discussion about the broader concept of water management across the basin and move towards looking at drainage as a component of that water management. It's a very intricate system, this wonderful prairie pothole region, and to see it destroyed like it has been is, uh, yeah, it's hard. <laughs>